So, we have been talking a lot about the Rankin wall where we have assumed that the backfill happens to be pure granular material. In practice many times it happens that you have to retain cohesive soils because of the lack of availability of a pure granular material all right. So, under these conditions though it is not advisable to have a backfill material as a cohesive material please make it very sure all right. So, we are just doing a hypothetical analysis to make ourselves understand that if cohesion is present in the backfill what would be its implications all right. Otherwise by definition backfill material should always be a freely draining material of very high permeability so that consolidation does not become a problem all right. Long term consolidation should not become a problem, water retention should not become a problem. The type of analysis which we have done in the previous modules where we have shown purged water table and the submerged situation where the water gets logged into the retaining wall these type of situations can be avoided by using highly permeable granular material all right. So, let us do analysis of a situation where the backfill happens to be a cohesive soil is a C5 soil let us say and it will be very interesting to see the case of you know a passive earth pressure. So, if this is the trial wedge and we have all those conditions which we have considered earlier, there is a QS height of the wall is H inclination of the slip surface is theta ok. We are trying to find out the passive earth pressure on the system. This is the W weight and this material happens to be a C5 material. That is the only difference. Draw the free body diagram of the forces which are going to act on the system. So, this part you are very well conversant with. We have the normal force acting on this system, then we have a component of the shear. Now, this happens to be a passive earth pressure. So, shear force is acting downwards and then the component of C comes into the picture all right. So, the component of the C is getting mobilized in this form which will be equal to C prime multiplied by length of A B. Is this okay? So, this is the only difference which we have made and L A B is known this is H upon sin of theta. Now, we can solve this problem by using the simple trial wedge analysis. So, try to work out the magnitude of P P what this should be equal to. The first component is Suppose if I take a worse situation here also if I allow water logging ok. So, the first one would be effect of water. If I take it on the left hand side this becomes P P minus half gamma W H square P P prime effective earth pressure under passive conditions plus what is the component of, what is the contribution from the soil, buoyant force H square into K P term plus what is the contribution from the C. So, this will be equal to 2 times C prime H root of K P and what else is remaining? The surcharge. So, the surcharge will be in the form of Q S into H into K P is this fine? Try to solve this problem or this situation by using trial wedge analysis. You know all the forces which are acting on the system and then compute this all right any questions?
Now, let me introduce the concept of tension crack in a C5 soil, which you have studied already. And if you remember, uh, we had talked about uh, the soil mass of height h, all right. And if this happens to be a C5 type of a soil with unit weight of gamma, okay, what we did? We drew the pressure diagram and this is how the pressure diagram looked like. And this is the Z naught, the depth of tension crack. So, here the tension is prevailing, here the compression is prevailing in the soil mass. This is all right. And the Z naught value we computed as 2C upon gamma root of K. All right. If you are working in pure cohesive soils, K term disappears, this becomes 2C upon gamma. If you are working in a C5 soil, this is the contribution of C, this is the contribution of phi in the form of Ka. So, we get the value as 2C upon gamma root of Ka. And if I multiply this by 2, so 2Z naught is equal to the critical height of unsupported cut. All right. So, this concept we are now going to use for analyzing the stability of the walls for finding out active and passive earth pressures. Is this part okay? So, if I extend this logic to the stability block over here, what you will realize is Now, this is the slip surface, this tension crack I am depicting as a crack over here, all right. So, this becomes C, now C is this, D and E. So, this is the tension crack. which is developing because of the inherent property of the soil mass being cohesive. What is going to happen during rains? The water will seep through, water gets logged over here and then the water pressure is going to act on the block and which is going to destabilize the entire system, all right. You remember all these things. Another property of E and D is this happens to be a free surface. Now, what is the attribute of the free surface? This surface has got detached from the parent block, all right, from the parent wedge. That means, this is a atmospheric surface. There is no reaction which is going to come on this surface in the form of the normal stress. That means, if you look at the free body diagram of E B D all right here the normal stress is 0 and the shear stress is 0 it is a free surface clear. So, this is a case which is defying the law of mechanics the weight is acting downwards and suppose if this happens to be a pure cohesive material this cohesion is going to balance. So, we have two forces and under which the body cannot remain in equilibrium. So, what is the way out? We have to assume that this block is of infinitesimal weight where weight is tending to 0, then only it is possible. Is this part clear? So, because the weight is the component which was dealing with the induced cohesion and the way to justify this would be if E D B is infinitesimal that means the weight of the block is tending to 0 then only the equilibration can take place that means 0 weight no cohesion gets mobilized. 
I can extend this idealization in such a way that I can, I can assume that the mobilization of the cohesion at point B is 0. When you reach the point D, it becomes the full mobilization of the cohesion. So, this is the C prime value, the maximum cohesion, all right. And beyond this point, what is going to happen? The C prime remains uniform. So, this is the variation of C prime. Starting from C equal to 0, attaining the maximum value at the tip of the crack, which is known as tension crack, and beyond which C prime remains constant. So, what we will do is we will try to utilize these properties in such a manner that they could be useful to us. The total length of the wall is or height of the wall is h, okay. This we have computed as z critical, all right. Is this okay? So, this is your z critical which I had defined as z naught or let it be z naught and this is equal to 2 c prime by gamma root k a. Fine. Now, can I find out the average C which is going to act on the surface A B? So, C average which is acting on surface A B. This will be equal to how would you compute the average C value? Total length of the surface? Is this okay? I am assuming this as theta. So, h by sin theta is the total length. What about this triangle? This will be half c prime into this value. So, this will be half c prime into z critical or z c z naught upon let it be z critical then because standard term is z critical. Okay. So, z critical divided by sin theta plus the rectangular portion. So, this will be equal to c prime h minus this portion goes out z critical upon sin theta. Is this okay? So, if you solve this expression, what is that you are going to get? Solve it quickly. So, this will be equal to C prime 1 minus Z C R open here yeah, divided by 2 H. This is right. Is this okay? So, this is the average value of the cohesion which is going to get mobilized on this surface. Why we have done all this analysis? We have done this analysis to make sure that we are using the right value of cohesion which is getting mobilized on the slip surface of a C phi retained soil mass for finding out the earth pressures. Suppose the soil happens to be pure frictional. Clear? What is going to happen? Pure frictional soil, no tension cracks, C prime is equal to 0, Z C R equal to 0. If Z C R equal to 0, that means the average C is equal to the mobilized C prime. This is part okay. And C prime can be neglected. Because what we are doing is we are assuming C prime to be tending to 0 for pure frictional material. So, value of C average will also be 0. So, this becomes a sort of a correction factor that is the critical depth of the tension crack divided by 2 times the height of the wall. 
Now using this concept, uh, we can find out the active earth pressures and passive earth pressures both. So suppose if I give you the value of C average, now can you write the expression for active earth pressure case because that is more interesting, alright. So this will be half into gamma w h square plus buoyant weight half gamma b h square. Now what is going to happen to the C prime case? That C prime gets replaced by the value which we have obtained. So this becomes, we are doing active earth pressure case. So this will be 2 C prime or average value and average value is equal to 1 minus Z C R over 2 H into H into K A, root of K. Fine. So this term becomes what? How would you define this term? This is basically average effective cohesion. which is exhibited by the soil mass. Similarly, you try to find out the PP also. So, there is no difference. I think you can just substitute the terms accordingly and you will see that most of the parameters remain same in this expression and we can obtain from PP also. So, this will become plus 2 C prime 1 minus Z C R upon 2 H into H into root of K P. And then these terms will also, we have done a mistake over here. So, this should have been K A, this will also become K P, fine.